Now, in the Christmas story, there are some things that have been embellished by tradition that need to be corrected to stay true to the facts. Well, first of all, we have to dispense with certain popular Christmas ideas about the Magi from the crushes and Christmas cards and Christmas carols. First of all, the New Testament text does not call them kings. It does not tell us that there were three. But that's an inference from the fact that there were three gifts. And the Magi were not necessarily wise men. You wrote an article on the Magi. Mm -hmm. And the essence of that article was they are not fictional characters. Matthew wasn't putting them in as part of a legend, but they are actually historical. Tell us why you came to that conclusion. Uh, the word magi is a Greek plural of the word magos. And originally this is a Persian word. And in the Persian tradition, Herodotus tells us, the fifth century Greek historian, these were the Medes who served as a priest and diviners uh, for, for the Persians. But by the fourth century, in the Hellenistic period, the word had come to mean astrologer. There's a very strong tradition of astrology as a science that developed out of Mesopotamia. And this was then transmitted to the West, to the Greeks, the Romans, and the Jews. There are some modern scholars who have claimed that the Magi are fictional characters created by Luke and added to enhance the Christmas story. But Dr. Yamauchi says there are good reasons for believing they were real people. Why? Because as was just pointed out, the Magi were astrologers, and astrology was condemned by Moses in the Old Testament law. Therefore, it would not have enhanced the story of Jesus' birth, but been embarrassing to the early Christians to include the Magi. So why did Luke include them? Well, we believe that, I believe, that this occurred. It's not a midrash, as some scholars suggest, uh, but something which actually happened, and which is a wonderful anticipation of Gentiles being brought into the kingdom of God. And the irony, of course, is that these Gentiles from the East, by perhaps a misguided sense of astrology, nonetheless thought that something wonderful was happening in Judea, that a king was being born who was to be worshipped with gifts, were willing on their limited knowledge to take action and to bow down to this newborn baby when Herod the Great, who had his scholars advise him of the prophecy of Micah that the Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem, didn't move a foot or a, a half a, a yard to do anything about this. Rather, he wanted to kill this infant born in Bethlehem.